My name is Madhya Afsal. I am a non-resident fellow at Brookings in the Global Economy and Development Program. Um, I'm also the author of a new book titled Pakistan Under Siege, in which I look at the roots of extremism um, in Pakistan. So President Trump began the year um, on Twitter. He basically said that Pakistan had engaged in lies and deceit while the U.S. had given Pakistan $33 billion in aid over um, the last 15 or so years. And he ended the tweet by saying no more, which sort of signified um, that uh, aid cuts were coming. The relationship with uh, Pakistan uh, has certainly seen its ups and its downs, but um, the last almost 30 years or so have been pretty fraught. The U.S. was one of the first allies that Pakistan had. In the 1980s, the U.S. gave funding um, and arms to Pakistan that helped it train the Mujahideen and arm the Mujahideen that fought um, the Soviets in Afghanistan. 1990, sort of when that Afghan-Soviet war ended, the U.S. abandoned the region in Pakistan's view. It withdrew from the region. And Pakistan took this very personally as an abandonment. And it really fed into the narrative of uh, America using Pakistan and then betraying it. So this is a popular narrative um, in Pakistan. What also happened, the U.S. imposed um, sanctions on it, and it cut off military and economic aid because it determined that Pakistan had a nuclear device. And after 9-11, um, the U.S. called for Pakistan um, to help it in its war on terror in Afghanistan, and Pakistan did help it in return for uh, money, in return for aid. After around 2008 or so, Pakistan, A, struggled with an insurgency on its own soil uh, in terms of the Pakistan Taliban, uh, but also was seen as providing safe haven to the Haqqani network, um, which attacked U.S. targets uh, in Afghanistan and Afghan government targets. And the U.S. started withholding some of its aid in the last few years of the Obama administration. So in that sense, the current uh, situation is just a continuation of um, the Obama administration's policy, but with much stronger rhetoric and a much more single-minded focus. To win the war in Afghanistan, America needs Pakistan for supply routes as well as to negotiate a lasting settlement, lasting peace in Afghanistan. And then the other element that makes Pakistan um, critical is the fact that it has nuclear weapons and could go to war with its, that it thinks of as its enemy, India. But uh, Pakistan also really uh, craves the approval, the friendship, and the stature that the U.S. can give it. So the relationship runs both ways. The U.S.-Pakistan relationship right now is at a low. I don't see it improving anytime soon. Um, for that to happen, the Pakistan military and elements within its military that support the Haqqani network would need to fundamentally change um, their behavior. And I don't see that strategic calculus changing anytime soon. The relationship could worsen in the short term in particular if the Trump administration follows the decision to cut off aid by further actions, such as rescinding Pakistan's major non-NATO ally status, such as declaring Pakistan a state sponsor of terrorism, such as diplomatically isolating Pakistan. These are all uh, moves that um, analysts in Washington have um, pushed the Trump administration to take if it sees Pakistan as continuing to be uncooperative, as sort of um, tools that the Trump administration can use. But I would argue that these will tend to backfire because Pakistan um, will not be seen right now as submitting to the U.S. even in the face of diplomatic isolation or uh, a change in status. What is really needed is a long-term relationship that is developed not with Pakistan's military, but with Pakistan's civilian governments who really understand much better uh, that the way forward is to let go of these militant groups.